Okay, carrying on with question number seven, um, we have part B, where we're asked to complete the cum cumulative frequency table. Okay, that's shown below, of course, using the root frequency table that was given in the first part of the question. Now, in this question here, you've got to know what a cumulative frequency table is. Now, a cumulative frequency table is a table which basically accumulates, you can say, finds the, the frequency as it accumulates along. Think of it in that, in that sense, okay? And what that actually means is, um, if you just look at the difference between the first and the second groups here, this tells you the number of minutes that each of or that three, there's, it tells you that three people stayed in the library between zero and ten minutes. And this tells you that three people stayed in the library less than 10 minutes, okay, which seems like the same thing right now. It become clear the difference in the second group here. The 39 here represents the number of people that stayed in the library between 10 and 40 minutes. So they stayed more than 10 minutes, but up to 40 minutes. More than 10 minutes, up to 40 minutes. Those 39 people stayed that long. The cumulative frequency table Okay, you're finding the number of people who stayed less than 40 minutes, less than or equal to 40 minutes, all the way back down to zero minutes. So you're basically finding the sum of everything before this group as well as this group. Okay, so you do 39 plus 3 gives you 42. Okay, so the next group here is 43 in the first table, in the top table, this is uh, the group frequency table, tells you there's 43 people who stayed in the library more than 40 minutes up to 60 minutes. But this tells us the number of people who stayed in the library 60 minutes or less. 60 minutes or less all the way back to zero. So we've got to add this 43 and this 39 and this 3, which is basically um, those two already added together in this number. So you just add these two numbers together. That gives you 85. So there's 85 students who stayed less than 60 minutes um, in total. Okay, and so on and so forth. So you've got to have 85 plus 33, that's 130 plus 10, which is 140. So 140 people stayed in the library less than 90 minutes, all the way back to zero. Okay, but there was 55 that stayed more than 60, up to 90. And these 11 people stayed in the library between 90 and 100 minutes. So if you add it to the 140, that's 151 people who stayed in the library less than or equal to 100 minutes, 100 minutes or less. <clears throat> and these nine people here, they stayed in the library more than 100 minutes, but up to 120 minutes. So if we add the nine to the 151, that means 160 people stayed in the library less than 120 minutes or 120 minutes or less. Okay, so that's where this frequency, a cumulative frequency table comes from. Basically, you're just finding the cumulative frequencies, adding together the frequencies, and the number here, 160, must be the same as the number in the, um, you know, survey. So this, the sum of these numbers must be 160. Okay, so if you don't get 160 here, you know there's something that you've done wrong. Okay, now the next part of the question tells us to actually draw the frequency, cumulative frequency curve. Okay, so use, so we're going to draw the cumulative frequency curve, that's part C. I don't think I've written that part down. That's what part C says. So I've got the table here filled out. And what we've got to do is now plot the values in on this graph. Okay, so we have the minutes and the cumulative frequency. Now what you've got to realize is the cumulative frequency is always the vertical axis. It's always the vertical axis. And here the time is going to be the x-axis, the horizontal axis. So a lot of people, they actually somehow miss, you know, mix these two things up and they plot three here and ten there. No, it's going to be three on the cumulative frequency and ten on the time. So now if you look at the units here, we can see that for 20 units, it's been given ten squares. Okay, so every one unit must be two. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and so on. So ten is going to be right here. And... The cumulative frequency of 3, again, this is 10 squares, 20 units, so every 2 is 1, so it's going to be exactly halfway. That's 2, that's 4, so it's going to be halfway between these two. Try and be as precise as you can. 
that's one point. Okay, then you got um, 40. 40 is over here, and you got 42. So let's move this out of the way. Right now, you got 40 against 42. So that's 40 on the time and 42 on the cumulative frequency, which is right there. Every one square is two units. Then you got 60 and 85. So 60 here and 85. Let's again just try and move this out of the way. Put it there for now. 60 and 85. So you've got 60 and 85. So that's 82. 84, 86, 85 is halfway between these two. Can be as precise as we can. Okay, and then we have the next is 90 and 140. 90 and 140. Let's see if that fits. Okay, 90 is halfway between these two. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom out a bit. Um, make it that much. Okay, that will help us to see 90 and 140. Okay, so 90 is exactly halfway. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's along this line. I keep going until we get to 140. Right there. Cool. Okay. And um, then we've got um, 100 and 151. Okay, 100 and 151. Okay, so that's 100. This line is 100. Okay. And 140. 150 is halfway. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And halfway between these two. Try and be as precise as we can. Okay, and then 160 and 120, that's exactly the top corner. Okay, so I'm going to move this out away a little bit. And I'm going to draw my curve. Okay, I'll draw my curve. It's going to look something like this. I'm not very good at this, on, especially on this sketchpad thing, but I'm going to do my best. I can really do one smooth stroke. Okay, not too bad. All right, so let's zoom back in again. Okay, now it says use your cumulative frequency diagram to find the median. Now the median is the middle value when you place everything in order of size. Now the middle value out of 160 entries is going to be the 80th entry, one halfway up. Okay, half of 160 is 80. So you draw a line across from 80. I'm going to draw it as a thin and dotted line. Okay, so I draw it across from 80. I see where it hits the curve. And from that point, I draw a line down. Try to be as accurate as I can. And I see where it hits the x-axis. So this 80 tells us where the median is. And the x-axis tells you what the median is. So each of these was 2. So that's like 58, 57. So it looks like it's 57 minutes. According to my graph, it looks like it's 57 minutes. Of course, there's going to be some um, you know, range of values because it just depends on how well you drew your graph. You know, everyone's going to be as accurate as they should be, but you know, it's not difficult, it's not easy. So they do expect some variation in the graphs because we're not machines and robots, so we're not able to do it perfectly accurately when we're drawing with our hands. Now, inter interquartile range. Now, the interquartile range is interquartile range, I'll call it IQR, is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Now, the upper quartile and the lower quartile. The upper quartile is the 75th percentile, and the lower quartile is the 25th percentile. What does that mean? Now, let's start with the lower quartile. It means it's 25% of the way up, okay, the cumulative frequency curve. So it's an entry which is a quarter of the way up. Now, a quarter of 160, Okay, a quarter times 160, it's 40, isn't it? Okay, so we got to go to the 40th entry. How do we go to the 40th entry? We go to 40 here. And we see that on the 40th entry, okay, it should be actually just below, just under 40. It's 42 was 40, wasn't it? Okay, so my graph is a bit mashed up there. Anyway, no problem. From 40... 
if you if I drew this graph properly, which I can and try and correct now, you can see that I've gone a bit too curved that way. It should have come up like this. Like that, right? So that's what it seems apparent to me here. Okay, that part. Okay. Now, so it's going to be just before 40, it seems. Okay. Just before 40. Actually, uh, yeah, that 40 on the community frequency is going to be just before 40. So it's going to be around, I'd say, 38, 39. Okay. I'll write it as the lower quartile is, I'll say the lower quartile is 39. Okay, we've got space for working there. Yeah, so I can say the lower quartile is about 39, and the upper quartile is 75% of the way up. So it's going to be three times this, three quarters. So it's the upper quartile is three quarters times 40. Its position is going to be 120, okay, 120th term. 120th term is going to be found by drawing a line from 120 across until it hits the curve. It seems like it's almost exactly on this value here. It goes down to 80. Okay, that looks like it's 80 there, doesn't it? That's right. So the, the upper quartile is 80. So the upper quartile is 80. So the interquartile range is 80 minus 39, which is 41. 41 minutes. Okay, the interquartile range is like the middle 50% of the data. That's where the middle 50% of the data is. Okay, so it's between this value and that value there, and that's the median. <coughs> okay, so that tells you what the lower quartile is, and that tells you what the upper quartile is. That tells you where the lower quartile is, that tells you where the upper quartile is. Okay? Now, the 90th percentile means um, where you have 90% of the data is below that value. Okay, 90% of the data is below that value. So the 90th percentile, you say 90% of 160. 90% times 160. Okay, so it's 0 0.9 times 160. Okay, so if you just work out what that is. 0.9 times 160 and that gives you um, 144 so we've got to go to 144 142 144 is right here 144 is right there draw the line across hits it right there and you go down and Continue going down until you hit the curve. Until you hit the the x-axis. Where's it going? There we are. Okay, it hits up right there, <laughs> and that value that's 198, 96, 94, 94. Okay, that's at 94. So the value of the 90th percentile is 94 minutes. That means 90% of the people stayed in the library less than 94 minutes. Okay? And then it says the number of people who spend more than 30 minutes in the library. Okay, so now we've got to go to 30 minutes. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to go to 30 on the um, M axis this time. So this is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And we go up. So we hit the curve. It's a bit high, so we go a bit lower. Just be precise. That's about right. Okay, so that is 22, 24. Okay, so that's 24 people spent 30 minutes or less in the library. 24 people spent 34, 30 minutes or less in the library. That's what that tells us. Okay, this is. Uh, the number of minutes, and that's the number of people who spent that less than that time. So we want to find how many people spent more than 30 minutes. That's a very common question. So the answer is not going to be 24. It's going to be 160 minus 24. Why 160? Because that's the total number. So we're looking for not the ones that spent less, 
but the ones I spent more. Okay, that's the ones all the way up to here. Those are the ones I spent more. So that's the number between 24 and 160, which is going to become 136. Oops, what am I doing? 136. Okay, so there's 136 people spent more than 30 minutes in the library, and you've got to be careful about this question. Many people, they just write 24 as their answer. If you said you spent less than 30 minutes, or 30 minutes and less, you would put down 24, but they want more than 30 minutes, so they want the rest of them, which is the ones going all the way up to 160. So 160 minus that 24. I hope that was clear, and I'll be doing the next video very soon. Thank you very much for listening.